So you have some creative time and you're all ready to work, but what happens? You freeze, cause, well, there's just so many things you could do. Or maybe it's the direct opposite to that and you want to art, but no ideas are coming through. You kind of feel empty, right? I mean, both of these cases can happen to any of us at any time, and it does. So today I thought what I would do would give you some ideas or maybe see them as prompts to help you to work through some of these stops. So if you are finding it hard to get started or you're getting stuck halfway through a project or you just need something to focus on to kick you off, then try some of these out. So prompt number one is the easiest prompt, just get some colour down, fill that page, canvas, paper, whatever you're working with, a splodge of colour, just break that white up a little bit and I've used some acrylic paint here for mine so I can layer over the top quite easily and also chosen a light colour to make it easier to keep on laying over the top because I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing here, so I've left my options open for myself. So nice easy prompt that. The next prompt is make some big and loose mark making. So this is a bit of a two-parter. Now if you're starting out on your art exploration and maybe you haven't got a, a lot of experience yet and you're just learning about what works with what and what materials you like to use, then use something to mark make with that you know is not going to run when you add other materials over the top. So something permanent. So permanent pens, pencils, things that don't react to water or acrylic paint. And again, pick a light colour if you're using this early on in your project. And if you follow those tips, then you're more likely to have a success with your piece and feel happy about it as you progress through. However, if you're further along in your artwork and you've got a little bit more experience and you're very comfortable with the materials that you use or you love taking risks and pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, then make some of these big marks using a material that won't stay still when you layer over the top. And feel free to use dark colours too. So perfect for that is to use a water reactive crayon or pencil like these watercolour pencils that I'm using here. So what this does is, it, well it does a couple of things, it sends a signal to your brain that this is a relaxed and playful piece, it breaks down that everything has to be perfect kind of feeling when you're starting off, and it leaves the door open for some potentially fabulous accidental finds, and that's where the risk taking comes in. So at the moment I don't know where this piece is going to go or what layers I'm going to be adding over the top. So I might add another colour over the top that will mix with this colour that I've already put down and I might find, discover a glorious colour or a texture that I couldn't have planned. You just don't know. So introducing an element like this quite early on can help you to make some unexpected discoveries. But, you know, there is a downside to this. It might be that it doesn't. <laughs> but if it doesn't, how you respond to how it fails uh, I don't like to use the word fail because it's not really a fail, but you know, if it doesn't work the way that you think it's going to work, or it goes in a different direction, how you respond to that and how you overcome that and how you turn it around is a massive learning point that can help you and add to your art toolbox. So something to try if you want to be pushing at your boundaries a little bit. Okay, so the next prompt or idea is a relative to the mark making and it's about adding pattern, so add pattern to your piece. And you can do this in a whole host of different ways, so try one of these out or try all of them out and you can do things like hand draw your pattern like I'm doing here or you could use some stamping and for this you could use a stamp you've made yourself, so check out my stamp making videos too and I will link those up for you. Or you could use one that you've bought. Or also, what about if you add texture through printing? So if you've got something like an embossing folder or a texture plate, you can use those to stamp with too. Another way of adding pattern is to use stencils. So if you've got stencils, that's a great way to add pattern to a project. Or you could make your own stencils. And I also have a video on different ways of using your stencils, so I shall link that up too in the description. So pattern is a great way to add some more texture as you build up your piece and you can often keep just adding bits of pattern here and there as the piece grows. 
So play around with using it from time to time and mix and match it with some of your favourite mark making techniques. And talk about mark making, here's another interesting prompt. Now how about adding some text? Now my favourite way to do this is to do the scribble writing. I love adding scribble light writing, lighting, writing to my pieces because I love the way it looks, I love the texture of it. But of course you don't have to use scribble writing to add text to a piece. Again there's lots of different ways you can do this. You could use stamping and printing, you could write out the words, you could use collage as well. Old book pages are fabulous to collage onto a piece. Even sort of cutting out letters and words from old book pages or newspapers or magazines. There are lots of different ways of doing it. So just pick one and try it out. And then for your next project, pick another one and try that out. And if you're really into adding text to pieces, then you could start adding your own thoughts and your own writings to your art as well. And if you're art journaling, this is a great way of doing art journaling. A lot of people do this where they art journal and word journal together. I don't know if word journaling is just called journaling. <laughs> okay, let's move on to prompt or idea number five. And one of my favourites that you see me use again and again, and this is to add a flower. But not just any flower for this prompt, let's focus it and go with a big flower. So a nice big flower somewhere on your piece. I've kind of used it as a focal point here, but you don't have to. You could put it as part of the pattern on your piece. Do a couple of them, three or four over the piece, have them half coming off the page. I mean, you can't go far wrong with flowers. And I bet that even if you think of yourself as someone who can't draw, that you can actually draw a flower and it doesn't have to be a perfect flower at all. So if you aren't comfortable with drawing and it isn't something that you do regularly, then before you start, just think to yourself that you're going to be doing a stylized abstract flower and then love what comes out. Don't judge it. And you know what? A flower could even be a big old circle and that's absolutely great. And of course I love that already because, well, you know how much I love circles. <laughs> so as you saw last week when I was doing some doodling tip videos, all, are, all with circles as the demo. Right, okay. I think we've got another one of my favourite prompts coming up and this one is to add a contrasting colour. Now I love doing this by using hot and cold colours. So if I have a colour down that is from the, the cold family of the colour wheel, so things like greens and blues for example, I'll change it up and add a warmer colour, so something like a yellow or a red. And that's just a great way of adding some really contrasting colours. If you kind of get stuck and you're like, what shall I do next? Try picking out a colour that's going to pop off the page. Of course, that isn't the only way to do it. So here are some other ideas as well. But if, you're, if focusing is your problem at the moment, just pick one and go with it. So another thing that I love to do is to add a neutral colour if, say, I've got lots of brights or the other way around if I've got lots of neutrals then add lots of brights. Or what about ut utilising tones as your contrast? So you can use a lighter or a darker tone of the colour that you've already got down there to form a contrast. And they're just a couple of different ideas, but you know, there's plenty more, so use whatever one that <laughs> pops out for you or use one of your own. Now I'm putting my colour contrast down with watercolour, and this is a watercolour pencil that I'm taking the colour from directly. So it's going to layer over that colour that's already there, kind of like a glaze. But it's quite a striking one and lets the flower stand out from the background, particularly the way I'm adding it to this page.
but I'm also going to add some more colour here but this time it's going to be one that's going to both lift the flower from the background but also work with that colour, the pink that's there. So I'm going to be adding a glaze like a tint this time and that's my next prompt is let's talk about glazes, add a glaze. If you're not sure where to go next or you just want to focus your idea down, try adding a glaze. Now glazes are transparent colour that can change the look of the colour underneath but it can also help to unify a piece as well and bring harmony to it too. So they're great to use in backgrounds for example to calm a busy background down or alternatively they're great for using on focal points to make them pop out from the background. So perfect for any type of project you might be doing, your art journal or your painting projects on canvas or on paper. And the way I'm using it here is to just use it on my flower to change up the pink to make it look different to the pink that's already in the background there. And you could use it on big sections, so you can use it on the whole page of the whole canvas, or you can use it on smaller sections like I'm doing. So the next time you feel like you want to reach for the gesso to calm a piece down, which is a very known and very used technique and it's totally fine if you want to use gesso but just stop a minute and have a think, have a look at it and ask yourself would a glaze do the job instead? What would happen if you basically added a colour filter over the section of the piece that you're thinking about putting gesso onto? And you know what? Just go ahead and try it. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, you were going to gesso that piece anyway, so try adding a transparent glaze over the top first, and then if you still want to gesso, go ahead and gesso. So it was one of the options I was thinking about with this. I was thinking, well, instead of using gesso, I was going to use a Naples yellow red sort of extra light, which is a very light buff kind of colour, very neutral, and would have been the equivalent of a gesso in effect because I was going to use it with a lot of water too but in the end I decided to go for a colour glaze. Right then, let's move on to prompt number eight and this one is, well did I say pattern? Because we're going to go with pattern again but this time it's a different type of pattern. It's more about random pattern. So the first pattern prompt was for ordered repetition. The second pattern prompt is for random repetition and I'm calling it pattern rather than mark making because basically I'm using shapes rather than just marks. So I have different colours and different sizes and a much more random placement of these shapes across my page to make up this pattern. And you can hand draw your pattern, hand paint it or go with some of the other pattern suggestions that I went through before. But this time, yeah, go for that random placement instead. I think this piece is starting to come together. So prompt number nine and for this one it's all about adding more emphasis to an element that's already on the page or already on your paint project or your canvas. So you want to pick out an element that's there and just give it a little bit more weight so that it pops out more. And you can do this on focal elements, absolutely perfect for focal elements or you could also use this technique or this prompt on partially covered elements or things that you might want to reinsert that have maybe sort of gone a little bit more into the background as you're working up your layers. And you can do adding emphasis to an element in different kind of ways. The way I'm using it here is to add a darker line over my piece with a paint pen. I drew it out first with a ballpoint pen but then I decided that I wanted it to just look a bit stronger so the paint pen works really well. But you can also do things like adding a new layer of paint around the outside of the element that you want to emphasise or alternatively on the inside of the element you want to emphasise. But again, you know, if focus is what you want then pick one idea and just run with it. Try it out. Next time, try out another idea. So it's kind of interesting to see how all these prompts work together, isn't it? This page was pretty random. I hadn't planned out what I was going to do on it. So it's fun seeing how these different ideas kind of come together. 
Of course, you don't have to use them all together on your piece. Cherry pick the ones you want for your project and use them as a jump off point to get you started or to get you to the next layer if you've lost your way a little bit or use them as a focus if you are just finding you've got too many ideas running around in your brain. Sometimes you just need to get creating to be able to create. So let me know in the comments which prompt or prompts you are going to be using in your next project or maybe they've triggered some more ideas to get you creating so I would love to hear and I will catch you again later. Look after yourself and enjoy your creating time! <laughs>